Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Proops. once again takes to the ether here from the enormously gratifying salubrious surroundings of the Varsity Theater located right here in the very heart of Dinky Town in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Wowzers, <laughs> McTavish. What, what can I say about a place called Dinky Town? Uh, first of all, the Varsity Theater is really nice, except if you're in the dressing room or backstage. The thing is this. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. The bathroom upstairs is amazing. If you haven't gone, we may take a break in the middle of the show just so everyone can go up and look at it. I don't know if you're familiar with the insane modernista architect Antonin Gaudi from Spain, where everything turns into a swirling, whirling vortex of a shell, of a whelk, of a whirl, of a, of a skeleton, of a deconstructed Paleozoic creature. But that's what the bathroom's like. <laughs> It's all these little pieces and it's all thrown together and there's giant weird shower heads to wash your hand under as if you're going to take a small genital bath or something. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh, I assume that people just get into a furious sweat in this theater and require a, a small shower to cool them down. There's also a pansexual, um, bisexual, ambisexual, male and female washing area, which I really, it's a taste of old Europe is what it is. <laughs> The crowd goes quiet. Apparently, I'm more excited about it than you are. I like washing my hands with women, frankly. Sorry, fellas. I enjoy chatting with you, but when you're there with women, you're like, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? You know, instead of like, hey. <laughs> Although, one thing I do appreciate uh, about men is it's not... Some guys break the social rule in the bathroom and they'll start chatting while you're like at the urinal and that's always like, really? Okay, this is going to be wild. Um, <laughs> uh, may I come to your house while you're doing something insanely personal and fucking chat with you about your life? Uh, oh, I see you're on top of your wife now. Hey, listen, you want to talk about baseball? Um, I remember being in a, a bathroom in the Persian Gulf uh, with Drew Carey, very wonderful memory, and um, <laughs> just the two of us, we can make it if we try, just the two of us, Drew and I, <laughs> under the Persian Woo! Gulf of the moon, that's when I saw Drew Carey swoon. Um, we were in Tomb Raid, Oman at a B-1 bomber base uh, doing a USA thing and I remember going in and him and I, he'd been in the Marine Reserves and none of the guys who take it, we were only there one night, no one took a shower, they didn't want to use the horrible facilities because it was like, you know, stand up things with dinky curtains and don't drink the water and don't open your mouth and all that shit and I fucking, come on, so I went in and like it was like a cathedral in there, you know what I'm saying, sepulchral tone, no one looked at you, no one spoke with you. You, you did your business, your, 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 you know, you did the, uh, all the business behind very thin filament. And, uh, and yet, it, it was as if it was a meeting of cardinals. Just... No significant eye contact, no chatting, no fraternization, no grab ass. Let's be honest. What's the thing you dread most as a man going into a fucking shower situation? Horseplay. <laughs> I don't want a towel snapped at me. I don't want my balls commenting on. I know they look like Larry Fine and shit. I get it. I get it. All right? Stop with the goofiness, all right? We're here to do a thing. Let's just do that thing. And then move the goddamn hell on. But Drew went in and I went in. And all the other guys went, no one took a shower? No, we're going to wait till we get to the hotel the next day. I'm like, you fucking pussies. Get in there and man up and use sand. It's to the dirt, you bitches. We're at a B-1 bomber base. You think these guys are fucking luxuriating every day like it's Tahiti or something and shit? Uh, in any case, we're here in uh, uh, Dinky Town, and across the street from this theater is a sign indicating that it's the Dinky Town Post Office. So I go in today, and I'm like, can I have a roll of stamps? And the guy's like, these stamps are enormous! <laughs> and... <laughs> I can barely lift them! What type of enormous letter are you sending that you require such postage? I'm like, really? Everyone is so small here. 
It's like a Fiona Apple look-alike contest. It's everybody's three feet tall with pointy ears, and I feel like I've got to throw a ring into a volcano. <laughs> My disappointment with Dinky Town is that everyone's not wearing green felt tunics and little red boots with bells on them. <laughs> Frankly, I feel like you're dropping it for the team here. If you go to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, there's fucking fishing boats. <laughs> Yeah, you see fishermen and shit. There's seals going, and you throw fish to them and shit. If you're gonna have a dinky town, shouldn't there be someone who's like, go no further, mortal? <laughs> the hydrant have no jurisdiction here. This is for us and all our kind, the dinky. I'm a pixie. I'm a smurf and I'm lost. Kind of a mentally defective aphasic smurf. I'm not even a smurf, I'm a Keebler elf. What am I saying? There's no fudge here under a tree. There's no cereal in a big pot. The fuck. What a ripoff Dinky Town is. Now, Bob Dylan lived here briefly or, or you know, hung around here. He's Dinky. He's the smallest folk singer in the world. He's like, what, 5'3", five, 5'4"? Five, he couldn't be any more than that. I saw a fucking six-foot dude walking down the street, like, with no excuses. <laughs> Go ye to Hyde and Heights. Uh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, now we made it to Minneapolis, uh, and I haven't been to Stepal on this trip, but I've been to Stepal before, and it's, uh, it's quite near here. That's <laughs> my understanding. Uh, somebody, what can I, what can I say about Minneapolis? Uh, every time I've come here, I've never had like weather as Earth knows it. <laughs> the last two days here in Minneapolis have been a sweltering ninety something. Yesterday's humidity was like fucking Jupiter at the red spot. It was like, wow, this is kind of dank. I can't breathe. I'm getting a methane, donut, you know, macaroni and cheese pizza filling, kind of like, oh, oh. Uh, Hard to breathe, hard to breathe. Uh, and then today, simply hot. Uh, I've been here at other times of year. I came in the winter once, which was a, a terrible mistake on my part. Uh, as you know, the outdoors is a rugged place where there's uh, 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 gum wrappers and uh, sometimes fruit. Uh, seriously dangerous outside. I mean, I know, this is, you know, Minnesota, and you guys jump in a canoe the minute you wake up, and then <laughs> rub your undercarriage with a snow cone or whatever, like, this is as warm as I'm gonna feel all day, and I know how it works here. You, you guys, it's harsh here in the winter, but, uh, I'm from California, and I'm an enormously sensitive artist, and, uh, <laughs> There's like badgers and shit, right? Worse than that, there's animals that fucking allow badgers to be out there. You know what I'm saying? There's animals that countenance other animals, and I, I won't have it. Uh, if you go out into the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. If you go out into the woods in the state of Minnesota, you'll find water. There's no question of that. There's water fucking everywhere. This is the leakiest of all the states. But also, there's no Chinese restaurants in the middle of a lake. I find that to be depressing. <laughs> uh, but look, what about the view? Yeah, what I'm looking at is no fucking food except what you fucking brought, and I don't want your tuna. <laughs> Gushing disappointment. Although, I was outside a minute ago uh, dealing with some matters, and uh, I, I couldn't help but notice but both the sun and the moon were in the sky tonight. How propitious. <laughs> And when I say propitious, of course, I mean how uh, alacrinous, how fortuitous. <laughs> Interesting to have all uh, the uh, heavenly bodies coincide on the night of a, a vodcast. Uh, so, in the times I've been here in the winter, extraordinarily cold. Uh, I had to uh, have huskies lick me out of an ice uh, wedge that I was in so I could go get a cinnamon uh, chai latte uh, last time I was here in the winter. Then I thought I'd outfox all y'all and come back in the spring. But no, it was fucking freezing ass in April. Like, torrential, sideways, icicle, dart-like, heinous, 
small javelins of fucking pain going into my eyes. If you wear glasses, fucking winter sucks balls. Because your glasses are covered with shit all the time. It's like having a windshield. The sighted don't understand, and you really never will. You did not listen. You're not listening still. Perhaps you never will. How I wish I knew. Um, and the summer is not exactly a fucking dream for people with glasses because you walk into a place, it's freezing and cold air conditioning. As soon as you come in from outside, your glasses steam up and then just condensate immediately. So you're a hilarious Andy Dick character from a fucking Jessica Simpson movie. And then in the winter, there's moisture all the fucking time. I don't know how you do it, but good for you. Uh, I would just cry if I lived in Minnesota. But, oh, there's an indoor mall. Exactly. <laughs> Malls need to be outside so you can smoke pot in the parking lot freely. Freely. But you can do it at the indoor mall, yeah, but there's a dude in a Cushman riding around. Uh, my favorite things from Minnesota, aside from uh, so many things, are, uh, of course, I have to go back just because. Mm, take five. <laughs> And by the way, the bar is open during the show. I don't see anyone up there. Uh, we're trying to watch you and listen to the first few minutes. Soon, you will grow weary of these words. <laughs> Drink, you will. <laughs> I'm not thirsty. I'm not thirsty. You will be. <laughs> you will be. Uh, I went to see, if I've told this story before, fuck it, I'm telling it again. There's been a lot of episodes, they're free, so whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> flip, flip over to Dana Gould for a minute. Um, the, I, I went to see Prince in 1984 at the, uh, at the Cow Palace in San Francisco uh, on the Purple Rain Tour, and it was, uh, Oh yeah, it was it was amazing. So and they sat on the radio. We listened to the radio in those days for instructions. <laughs> Citizens of Earth, remain in your homes. The communist threat is almost over. <laughs> now you can go to the airport and hear them say things like, "If you see something suspicious, report it to one of the underpaid douchebags <laughs> who wouldn't know what to do if you told them." <laughs> You're not douchebags, you're doing a job. Someone's listening that works for them. I'm not a douchebag. I know you're not. You know what I meant. So. <laughs> never meant to cause you any trouble, trouble, trouble. Never meant to cause you any pain, pain. I only want one thing, that's you love me. So, on the radio they go, wear something purple, right? So I was working at a tchotchke shop, right, in San Francisco, and I'm hoping there's enough Jewish people in this fucking county. If there's Jews in the audience, explain to the other people what a tchotchke is. For the white people, for the, for, the, for the people who talk like this, my name is Garth Sandenberg. I don't know what a tchotchke is, they're great, he. Just got finished polishing my Viking bobblehead collection and I came over here. Uh, I mean bric-a-brac, knickknacks, gigaws. Crappy 80s shit. Glasses that were like leveler blinds. Do you remember those fucking abominations? Don't. Those, I'll take pictures after. Those who don't. It's like Disneyland. A spring shoots out my ass and the ride stops. I'll take a picture with you after, I promise. Those horrible glasses, then the other ones, the wraparound new wave ones that were in blue and lime green and shit, and then all the, the, the O-rings in every different color. I had loads of black ones, right? Brooches, right? And uh, 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 the jellies. I didn't wear the jellies, I've said it before. Um, and then with horrible cheap pumps that cost $20 that all the strippers who danced at the O'Farrell Theater used to come in and buy from us. 
Uh, and then the t-shirts, right, with the super graphics, relax. Huh? It was, oh yeah, I worked in a store that sold that shit. And then um, our boss was so awesome, I can't say his name because it's so, it impugns him, but he knows who he is and he was great. And on Christmas of um, uh, that year, he came in in the morning and uh, we, we had to undo all this shit and take all the crap out of the boxes. It was always from China, or worse than China. It would be like from Stang Stay. And you're like, where the fuck's that? Like, what fucking blind child had to pack this into a box? You know what I mean? Like, where did this fucking cargo come from? And it was the cardboard that if one drop of moisture came on it, it exploded like a sausage, you know, like, who fucking made this piece of junk, you know? So, and it would come, and, and he had bought these you bangy ashtrays, right? that were the most tasteless pieces of shit, the most racist, objectionable. They weren't funny in the fucking 1830s, you know what I mean? They were, they were, they were big-lipped African uh, with bones in their noses that had little headdresses on, and you put your cigarette here and the smoke came out its nose. And he bought, he bought a case of these fucking things, right? And they sat in the store. First they were in the front, then they were in the side, then they were in the back, then they were under the counter, then they were nowhere, right? Like, you couldn't fucking give one of these things away. I think he asked 10 or 15 bucks at the beginning, then it was like, will anyone please remove these from the premises? I'm humiliated that I made this decision. And so, you, you, uh, so that Christmas morning, it was Christmas Eve, and we were open until seven, right? And we were on Polk Street in San Francisco, it was really busy, loads of people, and we sold cheap shit. Like, the most expensive item was like $25, right? So, we did mad, you know, cash only. And, it was a credit card too big. And I knew the tax on everything. I don't know if you've ever worked retail, but you learn the tax on every item. That way when you don't ring it up, you know how much to take out of the till at the end of the fucking day. Am I right or am I right? So, a sweatshirt was $10.24, right? So you'd go, oh, three sweatshirts, fantastic. And you'd ring up two and then fucking go, hey, does anyone want shrimp cocktails for lunch? Um, <laughs> It was always cab fare and lunch. I wasn't that larcenous. I'm not that big of a thief. I'm a petty thief. Uh, I worked with another girl, um, who again I will not name, whose business card said on it, Pharmacopoeia Extraordinaire. So, thank you for understanding Greek. For those of you who don't understand Greek, that meant she was a drug dealer. Pharmacopoeia Extraordinaire. And that meant that the breadth and scope of what you can, now these are 80s drugs, so it's largely coke and shit like that. And now it would be what, like Adderall and meow meow, I don't know what kids take. <laughs> what, what do kids take? They like reconstitute Wilma's from the Flintstone vitamins and turn them into some shit, I don't know. I don't take kid drugs, I'm not a kid, so I take grown up drugs. So, uh, but in the 80s, that's what we had. So I, I was really hung over one day and we were working together and I go, I, I am fucking, I've got, I'm pouring sweat. And she goes, uh, Go in the back and lay down. There was a storeroom, a heinous storeroom. Uh, and so I went in the back and laid down. I came back about an hour later. She goes, here's your cut. I go, my cut of what? She goes, like, the till. I'm like, have you not run anything up for an hour? You literally were just fucking taking out, uh, you know. So he comes in on Christmas Eve morning, and it's going to be heinous busy. If we did two grand at the till, that was a big fucking day, right? And he was an ex-cop and kind of druggy. He threw down a bindle to me and the guy I was working with each, right? And went through, and this is how he talked. He was going to take to try to stay awake. That's how he, that was his orders for the day. Try to stay awake is what he said. <laughs> take care of that. Try to stay awake. Take care of that. Try to stay awake. Uh, he, yeah, he spoke like Hunter S. Thompson. You know, how's that? Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. The prince pricked and comes out of the gun, like stealing the So we did coke all day and smoked cigarettes. You could smoke cigarettes inside most days. We smoked cigarettes all day and, and did coke and sold a million fucking plastic dinosaurs and <laughs> t shirts that said, don't do it. We went to the Christmas party at the boss's house, and this is how nice he was. There was each of us a box, and we opened it up, and inside, a you bangy ashtray. <laughs> with a hundred dollar bill stuck in it. That was a lot of money in 1985, man. Fucking hundred dollar bill with a you bangy ashtray. What does this have to do with Prince? I was working at that store. <laughs> When on the radio it said, if you're going to the Prince concert tonight out of the Cow Palace, be sure to wear some purple. <laughs> and for his purple majesty's request, 
Now, I got a rock block of Prince coming up right now. Prince was so large then that they played him on white new wave stations. Fucking it. Because MTV had a little trouble with the Negro thing at the beginning until Michael Jackson exploded the world and then they were like, hmm, white people will listen to Negroes. What an unusual development. You think I'm lying, but I remember I'm old. When MTV started, it was nothing but fucking Haircut 100 and shit for like ever. And then about five years in, they went, hmm, Prince. So uh, I stole a purple sweatshirt from the shop. No, I didn't dress like the white guy in the band. What, what's it, the, who's the drummer? What's the drummer's name? Bobby Z. Bobby Z. There's Brown Mark and Wendy and Lisa uh, uh, and Bobby Z and the doctor, Dr. Funk on keyboards. And, uh, and in, the, in the beginning, Des Dickerson, if you want to get back to the fucking original. But this was, this was, Des was gone and he was already in The Modern Airs, uh, which only existed as far as I could tell in the Prince movie. Uh, if you've ever seen Purple Rain, there's a scene where they pass through the club, which is still here, right? And, and Jazz Dickerson and the Modern Air is on stage, and they're going, I want to be a Modern Air. A Modern Air, a Modern Air. And then giant purple boots on and shit. And, uh, that was their only song, as far as I knew. In any case, uh, 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 I didn't dress like Bobby Z. I didn't have a pencil thin mustache and a floofy do and a fucking Diamante collar and like a long, you know, Paul Revere jacket and ruffly sleeves and shit like that. I wasn't dressed like I was in Sheila E's road crew or whatever. I mean, <laughs> Sheila E opened. Uh, and uh, so I stole the, the sweatshirt and we took a fuckload of psychedelic mushrooms, right? So we drove to the Cow Palace. And is there any story you're going to tell, Greg, where you rode bikes and then did a prayer meeting after? <laughs> No. <laughs> Listen to NPR if you want that shit. <laughs> if you want to hear stories about honest, hardworking people and their fucking boring ass middle class bourgeois bullshit, middle brow fucking lives where they don't do anything exciting and they worry about what color their fucking kids' bassinet is and shit like that, <laughs> and the fucking biggest thing that ever happens in their life is they eat two sandwiches because they're only supposed to eat one because they're on a fucking strict regimen or whatever. <laughs> If you want to feel like you're going to Montessori school, listen to fucking public radio. If you want to visit the fucking purple world of fucking groovy purpleness. And I think I pointed it out once before, but I'm going to point it out again anyway. The group America in the song Ventura Highway invented Purple Rain, because if you recall the song, he goes, uh, uh, Wishing on a fallen star, waiting for the early train. Uh-oh, sorry boy, I've been hit by purple rain. Right? And then Prince did it later. I'm sure he heard the song. Uh, but you mean it wasn't original? Mm -hmm. um, I heard it in 1973. Uh, and Prince is my age. Well, maybe a year older, but he looks good. The point is this. We're tweaking our ass off on mushrooms. We missed the first act, whoever the fuck they were. Sheila E's on. There was kids sitting in my seat, right? And I mean kids, like fucking 12 year olds or whatever. And I fucking threw their ass out and shit. Just pile of mushrooms. I went, like, hey, you two, beat it. And they're like, what? And I said, you fucking heard me. These are our seats. Boom. And they fucking, <laughs> and they fucking, my friend who's with me jumped out and was like, oh. I can't believe you did that, man. I go, I'm not standing. I'm not standing. We paid for these fucking seats. So Sheila comes on, and it was the fucking, you know, uh, uh, what, um, he started standing at the section mark. If you can't have to ask, you can't afford it. Lingerie, they made love. You know that one? <laughs> she knew she had a problem. <laughs> you know that one? She wants to lead a bum, 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 bum. And then Sheila would, I can't do it because I'm not that lonely. <laughs> I can kick the drums over and have awesome. So then she brought a dude out of the audience and tied him up. And uh, yeah, fucking vaudeville, man. She took out a stadium, brought a guy out of the audience, put him in a chair, fucking tied him up, put her fucking spiked heel in his chest and pushed his ass over and shit. And then goes, ladies, don't you hate it when your man comes home with the funk some, from some other woman's pussy on his Johnson? <laughs> And even at 24, high on mushrooms, wearing a stolen purple sweatshirt, I was like, that's a rather site-specific incident, don't you think? I, I don't know that all the women in this cow palace are on board on this one. I think some of them are rankled, others, their dander's up. 
Some will probably never face the fucking actual possibility of their man coming home with the funk from some other woman's pussy on his Johnson. Maybe their uh, cheating fucking uh, paramour was considerate enough to rinse after. <laughs> or even not come home. I don't know. I, I found it to be a frank and provocative question, one that I appreciated the honesty of. <laughs> after all, she was wearing lingerie. And uh, then Prince came on, right? So the whole place goes dark and they go, uh, you know, Pick it up, Yeah, fucking A, right? And then uh, we are gathered here together this thing called life. Electric world called life. And, 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 what is it that means forever? That's a mighty long time in a hotel. And fucking, they came out of grain elevators underneath the fucking stage, right? They appeared like, wah, 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 And they fucking came out and everybody went crazy and he's wearing the purple jacket and shit. Then when they did, um, what is it, computer blue? Which one is it? Wendy? Yes, Lisa. <laughs> is the water warm? Yes, Lisa. <laughs> Shall we begin? That one was awesome because lights out and they just did it on the voice. So the best, my, the, aside from everything, because that was the show where he had the guitar that ejaculated, you know, it was, it was high class funk. Uh, he threw down like nobody since James Brown. It was really, really tremendous. And then at the end, he gets up, not at the end, in the middle, like he's gonna do the acoustic part. They did a couple of old jams, like Let's Work and shit like that from the earlier albums. And then he got down and he sat down at the piano and he played free. And he gets to the chorus, you know, they're like, be glad that you are free. And he goes, say if you want to. <laughs> and the crowd goes, free to change your mind. And he goes, thank you. <laughs> Like it, like it doesn't happen every night. Like there was a night in Pittsburgh or whatever, really? Sing if you want to. Really? What else? Thank you. Fucking show business is so awesome. Good ass show that one was. And then of course, when I was a, a when I, I had a, a comedy group, in, I, I, I was in a comedy group in San Francisco uh, in the 80s, uh, we basically